From TimCast.com, leading Michigan GOP gubernatorial candidate Ryan Kelly raided, arrested in connection with January 6th protest. TimCast.com reports the candidate was raided on June 9th on misdemeanor charges related to the protest. He is facing four misdemeanor charges, knowingly entering or remaining in a restricted building, disorderly and disruptive conduct, knowingly engaging in any act of physical violence against a person or property in a restricted building or grounds, and willfully injuring or committing depredation against property of the U.S. The charging documents do not accuse Kelly of ever entering the building. He is accused of Mm. gesturing for people to move forward while on the Capitol steps. They also say that I guess he he assisted in someone pulling down. He's also accused of using his hands to support another rioter who was pulling a metal barricade. So they have photos that they argue is this guy. Now, here's what gets important. Ryan Kelly is currently polling at 19%. He is up four points. He is the GOP front runner for the primary to go up against Gretchen Whitmer. So we have one of two scenarios. We either have the DOJ being weaponized Mm -hmm. to shut down popular pro-Trump candidates, or we have a popular candidate who is an insurrectionist. Now think about either scenario. If you're a Democrat, you're looking to this guy and you're like, this guy was at January 6th (gasps) and he's winning. (laughs) Right. What does that say about the American people in that perspective? Now, I certainly don't believe that narrative. I think what we're seeing is the weaponization of the DOJ against political rivals. Yeah. This guy should have been there. He shouldn't have been gesturing people if that's what he was doing. Sure. The rioters should be charged. But to see an FBI raid on a prominent politician over misdemeanors, it's clearly, to me, weaponization. Well, right before, well, you're this is another question just really quickly. Right before an election, right. you know, when they had the footage, they knew this was going on. I mean, how long did it take them to, to process everything? To and, and now they're doing it? Sorry, it's go been ahead. A, it's I was been, it's say, been a year and a half. Yep. Yeah. I was going to say, if, if he is uh, an insurrectionist, he's not a very good one. Right. That's all he did. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, <laughs> right. and this is the point, right? They have this entire insurrectionist narrative. And the idea is that the sitting president of the United States, who was the commander in chief, and has control over the entirety of the armed forces, right. decided to overthrow the government and have a coup. And he did this by having a bunch of civilians without any guns yep. enter a building they weren't supposed to be in. And and many of them didn't even go in the and building. And many right. of them didn't go in the building. And m- many of them were waved in by police officers and didn't do anything violent. And it's I'm not just, even many of them. It's a fraction of a percent right. that I, did. I'm just imagining, you know, these, these hearings. The, the hearings are happening now. I don't care. And they're going to be like, this was a plot <laughs> by a sitting president to overthrow this country. A sitting and I'm president. going to explain to you how he did it. Yeah. He vaguely mentioned something about <laughs> walking towards the Capitol. Yeah. And yeah. then what he happened? T- took a selfie. They walked towards the Capitol. <laughs> okay. A bunch of this- people. Some, some people rioted. Maybe a few hundred. And then about half of them went in the building. And then a bunch of people were let in by the police. And they walked around taking selfies with those cops and then left peacefully. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. This is this this is the <laughs> sitting president, commander in chief, in control of the military. Literally has access to the button that launches nukes. Yep. And his plot to overthrow the United States government and become some kind of dictator was to have civilians, none of whom or ba- virtually none of whom, brought any guns. There were no guns. Go towards the Capitol, vaguely gesture that they had in that area. If this well, was yeah. a coup. It was the worst coup yeah. ever in the history of the world. Well, th- these hearings that we're going to be hearing about on, on national television, the January 6th committee hearings, they're putting out all the stops. They want to make sure that this is going to be a spectacle. They brought in the former president of yep. ABC News, the man that squashed the Jeffrey Epstein right. story, that suppressed right. it, that spiked it, that made sure that this was the famous story, the Amy Robich- uh Project Veritas Robach. story, Robach, uh, where she specifically said, we had Bill Clinton, we had all the evidence, we had this years ago, and it was squashed squashed by ABC News. That man that that was in charge of that is going to be now presenting the showcase spectacle that is going to be presented to the American public in just a few hours from now. So you can only expect how corrupted and how bad and how just emotionally manipulative it's going to be uh, attempted to sway the American public towards seeing something that, that uh, again, has um, been highly manipulated from day one. Yeah. And can, I, I want to make another point here. This is something that actually came from polling data, and I've quoted this on the show before, but more people who were polled from the general public want to see an investigation into the 2020 riots 
than want to see an investigation into January 6th. Yep. So right. where's that? Isn't it a threat to our democracy that we're investigating an event which a minority wants to see investigated yep. rather yep. than something the majority wants to I'm see investigated? I'm, I'm pretty sure more people want Hillary Clinton investigated. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think even a large portion of Democrats did. Or, or just yeah. release the list of, uh, you know, the clients from Maxwell. That's right. You know, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that would be a, a enough. And then Elon Musk just a few days ago even asked, how come the DOJ hasn't leaked that information? Mm -hmm. Nope. And that's a very important question that I think we, we should be asking because we are seeing the DOJ weaponized in a very yep. strong way. We just had um, another Trump administration member arrested just a few days ago at the airport. Yep. Uh, Peter Navarro. Peter Navarro. He's been on this show. He's been right. on this show before and he was in contact with the federal authorities and he said, you need anything? You need me to come in? You need me to provide evidence? Let's talk. We'll, we'll work it out. They, they set him up at the airport, and he says he was treated like an al-Qaeda terrorist, which which is not surprising in these days, uh, especially with just how overbearing and just how insane institutions like the FBI have been that just a few weeks ago, we found out, set up this whole Gretchen Richmore kidnapping plot, which again was totally uh, unfolded as a jury ruled that the people there were Ooh. entrapped by the FBI, the jury. No, the, no. The, the Gretchen Whit Whitmore. Whitmore. Whitmer. Whitmer. Whitmore. 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 Whitmore, I think, is a little bit more That's uh, better, yeah. potentially <laughs> That's appropriate. That actually is slip. better. Well, no. slip. I think <laughs> Whitmore. Luke makes a very good point here. Uh, so the FBI raids his house over misdemeanors. We saw an instance uh, when we were talking, I believe, with Nick Searcy about his film Capital Punishment of these two <clears throat> old ladies who had the FBI knock at their door yeah. because they walked through the Capitol after they were welcomed in by police. And then... We go to the Epstein story. The FBI raided his island, and there has not yeah. been a single indictment related to it. You're telling me they didn't find enough evidence well, to indict a single this, person? Well, no, 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 no. The, the FBI had witnesses coming forward for over 30 years, and they decided Amen. to yeah. ignore those witnesses in that yes. very specific case. The FBI aided and abetted this larger international trafficking and extortion operation, which, uh, which again, shows you just how badly corrupted institutions could be inside of Washington, D.C., leading to the suffering of thousands of children in unspeakable ways. So what we should want, I believe, as a society, is to know why our government is so bad at actually investigating anybody that's going to mess with little kids. Mm -hmm. How? Why are we so bad at that? Yeah. that I mean, historically, over mm -hmm. and over again, yep. this is what our justice system is actually really bad at. And I think the vast majority of Americans want to protect children. Absolutely. If there's any purpose of a justice <laughs> system, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Bad at or... Yeah, I think they're good maybe. at not investigating. Right. Like, I think yeah. they have a goal. Of like not the Epstein thing it. went on for how long? Yeah, over do? thirty plus years. Yeah. Right. That we know of. Since and then the, the first trial. victim came forward. The and first who says victim Epstein's came forward. The first guy to do something like this and get away with it under the government's nose. Exactly. So I, I look at this story, and uh, this was like a holy moment when. Uh, when this guy got arrested, because any way you cut it, right? The it, it's I, I think Luke put it well. They're doing this only a few months before the midterm. This guy is the front runner. They're shutting down a front runner. Aside from that, this is a guy who's done multiple rallies where he said stop the steal and all those rallies and things like that. People agree with him and they vote for him. Right. You know, I think what you see with like YouTube, they they ban anybody who agrees with Trump or pushes that narrative. Because they're doing everything they can to suppress this exactly this. Yeah, it's 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 all part of the same machine. Yeah, the interesting thing, if you actually go back and look at the the descriptions that they that they used of the, all the things that he did that were wrong, they actually describe everything that happened with the BLM riots. Mm. And you know, so we don't we don't use the same level of justice. We're not measuring the same things for both of these instances. And like you said, most people really do want to know what happened with these uh, with these riots. And I think this is absolutely crazy. I, I think that the this is what you're going to see from the Democrat Party in the midterms. They're going to run on three things. They're going to run on abortion. They're going to run on Second Amendment, take away our Second Amendment, and they're going to run on January 6th. Because what else are they going to run on? Well, yeah, yeah, they don't have a good economy. But even with those issues, the particular stance that they've taken on those are all losing issues. Yes. So gun control has been a losing issue for the left yep. for years and years and years. Like this is not something they've been successful with. And then even with their particular position on abortion, I've said a million times on this show, I'm pro-life. Most pro-choice people are not as extreme as the Democratic oh, no. Party is with their position. So when they say, and everyone was arguing this, oh, if the Supreme Court overturns Roe, they're going to be handing the election to the Democrats. Absolutely not. Because what the Dems are going to do, which is, right. which is what they have done, is come out with the 
most extremist yep. abortionist legislation that most pro-choice people are going to say they wouldn't be willing to accept. Right. We talked about it yesterday in California. They're talking about post-term abortion. Mm -hmm. It's a huge problem. So, but go back to January 6th. I believe that this is what the le the radical left is using to squash political dissent. And that's the, that's the real problem is if we're using this, I mean, we have political prisoners right now in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's both sides of the aisle should, this would be grave concern to all of us because then what's the, what's, what's the next step? What are we going to do as a society if we now have political prisoners? Yeah. Let me, let me, let me, let me go back in time. Uh -oh. 20, 2016, <laughs> Donald Trump was saying, lock her up because you'd be in jail. He said to Hillary Clinton. Sorry, people started chanting, right. lock her up. A lot of people on the left were like, this is dangerous rhetoric. I agree. It is. Of course, I think Hillary Clinton has done a lot of nefarious stuff and she should be investigated. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.